Today FM is awesome in Ba. We love you today FM. Today FM rocks in the story and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM is number one in Tele. Today FM rocks in Otaka. Woohoo! Today FM is the most popular station in the scene. We love everything about Today FM here at Golden Point Reki Reki. Everybody in Singapore loves Today FM. Today FM rocks in Ba. Bulan 2 saya betul FM en nampak dua air rakyat Bula FM nampak dua inosor Gue etapa ke buat sekolah sama Bula FM ngan Bula FM nampak dua air korbu Bula FM nampak dua air sawa Bula FM nampak dua air lotokan Bula Nampak dua nampak Bula FM memba Bula FM nampak dua air nasir in Singapore Kalau tak lihat ke warung yang Bula FM lotokan Kalau tak lihat ke warung yang Bula FM nampak dua air On the news tonight, PM orders authorities to take over water crisis situation in Ba. Education Minister clears the air over distribution of school grant. And Wedding Planner scoops three awards for best local small business. Good evening, I'm Jackie Spate and you're watching FBC News. The Water Authority of Fiji says the spread of leptospirosis, hepatitis A and dengue fever to humans from a private water source in Bar should be a lesson to everyone. As Mikolonga reports, the authority is ready to make the necessary improvements to any water source to ensure communities are supplied with clean and safe drinking water. The Water Authority of Fiji says our water sector is improving and will become better if given the right attention it needs. The water sector in Fiji is uh, undergoing a transformation. So you can't do everything in 24 hours. It's a gradual process. The Chief Operating Officer says Fiji is no different from other developing countries. Relevant authorities are doing all they can to ensure communities are provided with the best there is. Water sectors in even developed countries has evolved. It's through different stages. So they, are at, uh, pri they were at primary stage and they were come into more developed stage. Uh, they go to more advanced stage. So we, uh, as, for, as far as uh, water authority is concerned, we are going in the right direction and also the water sector, particularly in uh, Fiji, is going in the right uh, direction. Ateniake feels one can only learn from the incident in Ba and hope for the better. It's a lesson for everyone. I think it's, it has to be uh, discussed uh, by everyone. It has to be appreciated that this is a priority. Any water system needs to be protected and it has to be regulated and uh, uh, it has to be managed well. The central government is working to implement regulations to set our water sector in order and has gone to the extent of engaging consultants to see that the much needed improvements are carried out with stricter rules to ensure greater compliance to safety measures. Mikolonga, FBC News. The Education Ministry has cleared the air on the distribution of government grants to schools. Education Minister Philippe Mbole confirmed that schools which haven't undertaken an audit won't receive the funds. Chanel Sivan reports. No school will fail. I'm just telling you, no school will fail in submitting either the financial report or audit report. That's how confident the Education Ministry is that all schools receiving government grant from next year will produce a financial or an audited report. Education Minister Philip Mbole says they want schools to plan how the funds will be utilized and the developments they will carry out. We expect the school to submit to us their audited statement. Without the audited statement, you know, no money can be paid out. What we will be requiring from the school is, uh, first of all, the audited statement for this year to show us how they've used their grant this year and uh, the plan for how they're going to use the money that will be given to them. If schools cannot provide an audited report, they will need to provide a certified financial report. The ministry wants to ensure the grants are utilized to help government achieve its vision to building a smarter Fiji. The auditors are not everywhere in Fiji. We don't have auditors all over the place in Fiji, but we expect the financial report, you know, all the money that they received and how this money was used coming from the school 
and there are a lot of people that can certify that. But generally, if the, our administration is satisfied with the information given to them, before the end of the first month, they'll get the grant. From next year, parents will not pay tuition, textbook, building fees or any other fee charged by schools from primary and secondary school students. Over 200,000 students will benefit from this. Chanel Shivan, FBC News. Participants in a regional workshop that wrapped up in Suva today are now expected to have a better understanding of how to apply international labor standards and conventions in domestic courts. Fiji has ratified a number of conventions. However, the training revealed a lot of the information is kept at higher levels. Ritika Pratap reports. The four-day workshop on international labor standards, a first for Fiji, was attended by participants from trade unions and students who are studying law. The participants were keen to understand what it means for Fiji to ratify ILO conventions. Things done at the Geneva level if it's tripartite, they're trying to understand why things are not done at the national level in a tripartite manner. So what's decided and adopted in Geneva, how do we replicate that as a member of the ILO at the national level? Nathan says unions need to have a better understanding of the convention. Trade unions really have to equip themselves to engage better, not only with their members, but also engage better with the employers and with the government. And this is what we really have to equip them for. When we say raising awareness, raising knowledge, raising skills, it's also to change their attitude at the end of the day. And that's what I think this workshop has really looked at. The workshop revealed big gaps in understanding the conventions at all levels. Generally, the leadership may know, but we're really trying to take it to all levels. It's not enough only for the leadership to know and understand this, because unions are membership-based. And membership must also understand what is the role of them as being members of the union and also what is expected from the leadership of the union. The aim of programs was to equip industrial relations advocates with an understanding of ILO international labor standards and the use of ILO international labor standards in national courts. Ritika Pratap, FPC News. Still to come on FBC News, Hilton Special School celebrates 50th anniversary. It's always Gold FM for us at Golden Point, Raki Raki. Gold FM is number one in Lusaka. Gold FM is Nandi's best radio station. It's always Gold FM with us here in Singatoka. Old is Gold and Gold FM is number one here in Lotoka. Singatoka loves classic hits on Gold FM. You listen to Gold FM here in Tawa. We love Gold FM in Ba. We've got beautiful beaches, people and Gold FM in Raki Raki. Lotoka loves the classic hits on Gold FM. Welcome back. You're watching FBC News. Prime Minister Vorenge Mbaini Marama has today ordered authorities to immediately take over the Mbale Vuto Dam and bring it to health standards following his visit to the crisis affected area this afternoon. The emergency operation at Nukulo is expected to continue and water will be carted to the hundreds of families affected by the recent water crisis for the next two months at an estimated cost of $400,000. Christopher Chand reports. Baini Marama visited the dam today to see firsthand the problem that has caused the disease outbreak. Uh, but the water needs to go to everyone that will affect it. Mm. Yeah. They don't want uh, tanking water that only provide them, uh, some uh, five hours every 24 hours when they want water. Yes, they want 24 hours of drinking water yeah. like everybody else in this room. The emergency situation has already chewed up more than $20,000 and more funding will be needed to continue temporary relief for families. Water Authority of Fiji will now take over the dam 
and it will take two months to improve conditions. We cannot take over that list now, but uh, we can uh, do it compulsory. So, AG's office is looking at uh, the um, evaluators. That within uh, seven, uh, three months. That is the directive given by the Honorable Prime Minister. So we are, uh, what authority has uh, determined to accomplish this task uh, within three months. More than 80 suspected cases were recorded in two weeks during the disease outbreak, and more are expected to fall sick because of the water which was coming from the Dayal's dam. No, I don't think so. <laughs> Uh, we should not be held responsible for all this because we do not know the cause. I mean, like the health department is saying, but uh, we do not know. I mean, but the water system is here for the last 56 years. Bainimarama wants a permanent solution, and government is looking at constructing a new dam in the mountains near the area. In the time being, he wants water to be supplied to every home while they work on restoring the dam. Christopher Chand, FBC News. An artistic designer who turned his skills into a dream business says hard work and perseverance help a person succeed. Richard Devendra scooped three of the ten awards at the 2013 FDB Small Business Awards in Suva last night. As Shireen Lata reports, Devendra took out the Professional Business Services Award, Special Award and the Overall Best Business Award. Richard Devendra is the Managing Director of Dreams Wedding Planner in Ba. When I received the first award, I felt very happy and excited and when I received the second award like it was something my excitement turned into an awesome evening and then when I won the major award it was just like a dream come true. Devendra's business includes wedding planning, catering and decorating. He set up his business in 2007 and his clients range from Raki Raki to Suva. In Fiji we couldn't find much wedding industry and then uh, as we went into this wedding industry and this is where we became very famous in Fiji. Devendra believes such work should not be categorized as a women's job only. I don't think only uh, female should be wedding planner as done in the movies. Okay. <laughs> and in real life, male wedding pl uh, planners are more qualified. As they say, when women cook at home, it's duty. But when do men does it, it's an art. The FDB Small Business Awards is held each year to recognize the small businesses who against so many challenges continue to thrive due to determination. Sharin Lata, FBC News. The Fiji National University has started work on their two new campuses, one in Lombasa and the other in Navoa. Four, four and a half million dollars, sorry, has been set aside by government to establish the campuses. Eleanor Turangai View has more. The Fiji National University boasts the largest number of students from Fiji studying in its centers around the country. The building of two more centers is necessary given the increase in enrollment. Education is the investment that everyone must be making. So now the government has made this investment. There is no excuse for any parent or any student not to study. The first phase of work on the Lambasa campus, situated just across the town at Nayada subdivision, is expected to finish early next year. Uh, it's a campus which will take four to five years to complete. We hope that the first phase of the work will be completed by January uh, next year. And then the second phase will commence, which will use the funding which has been allocated. FNU is also expanding its facility in Navua to cater for agriculture students. We'll be gradually uh, taking a lot of our agriculture students where they will study as well as get hands-on training on the farm. So by the time they graduate, they'll be uh, fully conversant with not only the theory and the technology, but also be able to do farming. Uh, the university has been given an operating grant of $38.5 million for next year. Eleanor Turangaiviu, FBC News. Hilton Special School celebrated its 50th anniversary today. School manager Joa Hirlal says in the past 50 years, the school has risen above many challenges and they are happy with where they are at now. Vosita Kotewasawasa reports. Former students of Hilton Special School in Suva are grateful for the changes undertaken by the Education Ministry in allowing disabled students into some normal schools. One such former student is Saini Mili Naivalu. She is a successful athlete today 
winning silver at the recent Queensland Games, a gold medal in powerlifting and also participates in short put. According to her, this achievement indicates they are capable of achieving anything. Dream is the most important thing. Uh, we can do anything, but with God and his guidance, we can achieve all. Meanwhile, former teacher and school manager Joahir Lal says the lack of specialized teachers is a concern. Not many, only a few teachers who are really qualified. I've already written to the Ministry of Education looking for the uh, specialist teachers for these schools. Lal says they're working at providing the best for the students. Getting some specialist teachers and volunteers from overseas to help us in uh, looking after the students and to give them a better idea of how to train our teachers here so that they can uh, implement those ideas for the special students. Hilton Special School currently has 74 students and 51 students are schooling at its early intervention center. Vasita Koti Mwasa FBC News. Jamie joins us now with sports and how was the Coral Coast Sevens today? Well, great games in both the men's and women's competition on day two. Quarterfinal spots have been secured while Ben Ryan absorbs the abundance of talent on offer for his squad for the next leg of the Seven Series. Also after the break, Tavua Town Council organize a matchup between Tavua and Vatukola Rugby Unions tomorrow in a bit to raise funds for sporting facilities. Details coming up. Pato Bahe, Bame Radio Fiji 2 ke konsa ke roke, online clear. Radio Fiji 2, rake rake ke log jada sunte hai. Nendi mein hum sab ki pasand Radio Fiji 2. Pahle wu ke log Radio Fiji 2 sab se jada sun rahe hai. Meri pasand Radio Fiji 2, Masuri mein sabhi ko pasand Radio Fiji 2. Tawa mein Radio Fiji 2 sabhi koi sunte hai. Radio Fiji 2 rock. Radio Fiji 2, I love you. Local talent at his disposal. That's been the case for Fiji 7's coach Ben Ryan, who is relishing the constant talent on display at the Bailey's Coral Coast 7's in Singatoka. Tomorrow's quarter finalists have been determined, and it will be the basis of his selection for a 16 member squad for the Dubai and South Africa tournaments. Elena McDonald has more. Defending champions Red Rock lives to fight another day after making the top eight for tomorrow's Cup quarterfinals. And the tremendous amount of skills from day two's action is something our national coach is marveling at. One of the problems, I guess, is there are so many players and um, it's, it's keeping tabs on everybody. And I think, again, once we get to the, the tastier game. So when we saw Wardens versus Barbarians yesterday, that was a high-level game. You know, that was really good quality. And so the best players stand out in those games. And um, I think when we get to the quarterfinals and onwards, that's where we'll see the, the quality rise. Ryan names his 16-member squad to Dubai and South Africa tomorrow. And while many have impressed, the type of players he's looking for is a consistent one. I'm not going to judge someone on just one game. You know, they could be an outstanding in one game, but they need to back it up for the rest of the tournament. And uh, International Sevens is about that and being consistent. So um, I'm going to be looking at, you know, what happens over the group games and the knockouts. So it, it is, you know, all culminating really towards um, a sort of a, a selection crescendo tomorrow. There's lots to look forward to with the quarterfinals drawn up. No doubt Red Rock will be finding it tough to defend their title with teams like Ndaveta, Yamadia, Police, and Serevi Selix at their heels. Elena McDonald, FBC Sports. And all the quarterfinal matchups for the women's competition at Bailey's Coral Coast Sevens in Lawanga Park, Singatoka have been drawn and is underway. Undefeated from pool play is defending champions, the Aussie Pearls, Fijiana, USA Outfit and the Serevi Selects. 
going head to head this hour is the Aussie Pearls versus Super Club Hinemoana. There's definitely going to be tougher matches witnessed with the remaining quarterfinal games this evening. Teams to look out for tomorrow will be Fijiana and the Aussie Pearls. Flying Fijians coach Inoke Male has made nine changes to his side as they prepare to face Italy on Sunday. Laced with experienced reps, Male has made several changes to his back line that are sure to pack a punch against the, against the Azzurri this weekend. Fiji needs to get a second win under their belt while on tour in the Northern Hemisphere. At fullback, Metuisela Talimbula takes over duties from Timo Timothy Nangusa. Nangusa moves to the right wing for Aseli Tiko Rituma, who shifts to outside centre to partner, partner up with Nemani Nandolo. Sermai Mbai replaces Waisea Lubeni Ali at fly-half, while Nemai Kenatale comes in at half-back. Masi Matendingo replaces Sisa Komaembole at number eight. For the Flying Fijians, beating Italy will mean a whole new confidence boost for the side and its fans. The Vodafone Fiji Mbati are bracing for a tough physical encounter against Samoa in the quarterfinals of the Rugby League World Cup. The coach is fully aware of what the Samoans will bring to this game and is preparing his players for what is to be an entertaining battle. Yeah, we know they're a physical team. They've got some, some line breakers and you know, match winners in their team. A powerful team, good skill, good offload, really good carry on the footy. Um, physical in defence and aggressive in defence. Um, yeah, they're, they're a good team and you know, it's going to be a tough game. You know, there's a lot of them now experience in their team. And, you know, the good quality outfits they've shown in the last couple of games that they're starting to hit their straps. So we're expecting a, a, a real tough game. Coach Rick Stone will name a 19-member squad tomorrow with the starting side to be announced 90 minutes before kickoff. The party will take on Samoa at 4 o'clock on Monday morning. Apart from all the rugby action, primary schools athletics was another top sports feature today. And it came in the form of the FMF Char Games being held at Churchill Park in Lautoka and Suva's ANZ Stadium. While Suva are the top favourites for the Central Games, Ra did well to dominate day one of competition in the Western Division. Long distance races earlier today proved to be their biggest strength to lead in both divisions. In the girls division, Ra has recorded two gold, one silver and two bronze medals. Lautoka is in second with Mba in third position. In the boys' division, rise ahead of Nandi and Nandrunga. The Tavoa Town Council has organized a fundraising match between the Tavoa Rugby Union and the Vatakolo Rugby Union to be played tomorrow at Gavi Park in Tavoa. According to Tavoa Town Council CEO Tulsi Ram, the purpose of the match is to develop Gavi Park for sports starting with the gym. Ram has called on all fans to come down and support the event, which he says will become annual. The gate takings from the match will be shared equally by the Tavo Town Council and the Vatkolo Rugby Union and the Tavo Rugby Union. The match will kick off at 3.30 p.m. tomorrow. That is your sports for tonight. Remember, you can catch live coverage of the Bailey's Coral Coast Sevens tomorrow starting at 1.30 p.m. Good evening. <laughs> Fiji Television Limited has launched a new corporate look as part of its rebranding. The company launched their new website, corporate logos and seven new channels on Sky Pacific, which it says will give Fijians more choice to news and entertainment. There are plans to have a total of 25 pay channels by the end of the month. As you know, there's a lot of uh, entertainment choices out there for the members of the public, so we have to keep on pushing ourselves out there in the public so people know there's a choice for entertainment and hopefully they'll choose uh, Fiji TV, either the free to air or pay television. Nguanelevo says they have also revamped their program lineup as a result of competition in the market. <laughs> Time for the weather girl and she better have some sunshine in her forecast. You are so nicely Jackie, I'll do my best. Only three sun icons on our map today. If you live in the west, hopefully you made good use of the fine conditions this morning since that ended this afternoon. It was pretty much showers and thunderstorms for Suva and the Northern Division. 
Looking at temperatures, we have three centers on 31, two on 29, and the Sugar City all on its lonesome on 30 degrees. In case you can't get enough of these wet conditions, there'll be more showers and thunderstorms tomorrow. And if you didn't catch my forecast yesterday, a strong wind warning remains in force for southwest Viti Levu, Yesawa and Mamanuva waters, Vatuira and Kandavu Passage. And that's the last you'll hear from me this week, leaving you now with a sign from Mother Nature that Christmas is just around the corner. A photo taken this morning of a flamboyant tree in full bloom in the Sese. Thanks so much for that, Genevieve. Our headlines again, PM orders authorities to take over water crisis situation in Bar. Education minister clears the air over distribution of school grant and wedding planner scoops three awards for best local small business. To our poll question for this week and we're asking, are you pleased with the 2014 national budget? Go to www.fbc.com.fj to take part. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj. That's all from FBC News Today. I'm Rita Pridashni, joins you from tomorrow with the weekend news. I'll be back again on Monday. Until then, have a safe and enjoyable weekend. Ni the manda. Today FM is awesome in Ba. We love you Today FM. Today FM rocks in the story and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM is number one in Taylor. Today FM rocks in Otaka. Woohoo! Today FM is the most popular station in the scene. We love everything about Today FM here at Golden Point Reiki Reiki. Everybody in Singapore loves Today FM. Today FM rocks in Ba. Yeah!